Welcome to the AV400 sample change training. Today we'll be going over how to prep your samples, place them on the sample changer, and set up your experiments. Here we are watching how the sample changer transfers samples from the carousel to the instrument. You'll note that the samples are picked up at the top of the NMR tube. This is important because if your tube is not tall enough, the arm will not actually be able to reach it and pick it up. Before placing your samples on the carousel, it's a good idea to double check that your NMR tube is at least 16 centimeters tall and is no taller than 27 centimeters. If the sample is taller than 27 centimeters, the arm will end up pushing your sample down in the spinner, ultimately affecting where your sample sits inside the instrument. This will not only affect your spectra, but could also damage the instrument. When prepping your NMR sample, it's important to use the appropriate amount of solvent. As a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to fill your NMR tube to roughly two to three fingers in height, or more precisely, 700 microliters. The next step when preparing your NMR sample is choosing the appropriate spinner. There are 120 spinners located at the sample prep station and only 120 spots on the carousel. So ideally, you should never have to grab a spinner from one of the other instruments. You will want to find a spinner that holds your tube with the appropriate strength to where it does not readily slide down the NMR tube when you let go. On the flip side, you do not want a spinner that grips your NMR tube so tight that you have to force it on. This can cause the glass to break and potentially lead to you cutting yourself. Now each spinner varies slightly with how tightly it will hold each tube. These differences, along with small variations in the NMR tube diameter, give each spinner a unique fit for your sample. So when choosing a spinner, it is important to shop around and find a spinner that will hold your tube just right. Once you find the appropriate spinner, the next step is to set the depth at which your sample will sit in the spinner. This is done with our maximum depth gauge located at the sample prep station. To properly gauge your sample, Place your NMR tube and spinner in the gauge and press down on your sample until it is flush with the bottom. This ensures your sample will sit at the appropriate location once inserted into the instrument. So, if you need to run an experiment using less than the recommended amount of solvent, we have a separate depth gauge for you to use, which we refer to as the manual depth gauge. The reason behind the use of a depth gauge is to ensure that once your sample is inserted into the instrument, it will be positioned so that the focal point of the irradiation will be centered on your sample. Now the maximum depth gauge sets this position perfectly if you use the recommended amount of solvent. If you need to use less than the recommended two to three fingers worth of solvent, the manual depth gauge will be very helpful and is located at the sample prep station. This gauge works essentially the same as the automatic depth gauge and you will start by inserting your sample and spinner into the gauge. You should note here that there is a bottom maximum depth line, which sets the depth to the exact same position as the other depth gauge, and your sample should never sit below this line. Now in addition to this, there is a thick bolded line in the center that identifies the focal point of irradiation. What you will want to do is raise your sample up until it is centered on that focal point. This will not only help increase your signal intensity, but is also helpful for locking, shimming, tuning, and matching performed automatically by the instrument. This will ensure that your spectra looks as good as possible. So the last step for placing your NMR tube up on the carousel is to clean off the NMR tube. The insides of the spinners tend to accumulate dust and oil from people's fingers that can then be transferred to the outside of your tube. You can wipe down your NMR tube with one of the provided chem wipes, ensuring not to change the position of the spinner and dispose of the chem wipe in the receptacle. Lastly, I will typically double check that the position of the tube did not change. The convenient thing about using the sample changer is that once you have set up your sample to run, you do not have to be physically present during the acquisition. The instrument and software will automatically acquire your data and you can later remotely access that data on your own personal computer. This means that throughout a given day, the carousel tends to fill up with user samples. To ensure that the carousel does not fill up completely, the samples are removed and placed on the sample rack every morning. These samples are placed in the bin labeled with the day of the week they were taken down. If you come looking for your samples the day after acquiring your data, know that they will likely be somewhere on this rack.
In addition, if you do not pick up your samples within one week, they will be donated to a graduate student in need on a first come first serve basis. The next part of this demonstration is to show you how to physically place your sample up on the carousel. When placing your sample on the carousel, you'll notice that there are two rows in which you can place your sample, an inner and outer row. As shown on the sign, the inner row holds samples 1 through 60, while the outer row holds samples 61 through 120. Throughout a given day, we run samples sequentially 1 through 120. This makes it easy for users to quickly access where their sample should be placed while also allowing for easier use of the software. Each position is labeled with two numbers. The top number corresponds to the inner row, while the bottom number corresponds to the outer row. When placing your sample on the carousel, it's important to know exactly where to place your sample. As I mentioned earlier, we run the sample sequentially from 1 through 120 every day. You'll note that one of the samples is not quite like the others. This white sample right here is what we refer to as the dummy sample, or placeholder sample. It simply sits on the carousel to designate where the next sample should be placed. Now, as you approach the instrument, you're going to want to remove the dummy sample, moving it out one position, and subsequently placing your sample where the dummy sample was originally located. Once you have placed your sample on the carousel, you will want to make a mental note of what position it is in. As we can see here, our sample is placed in position 24. This is important so that you can ensure that once you start adding experiments in the software, you are doing so to the correct sample. One issue that commonly trips users up is the transition from position 60 to 61. Let's say, in this hypothetical scenario, you walk up to the carousel and the dummy sample is in position 60. As you remove it and place it in the next position, which would be in spot 61, that position is now in the outer row. We have marked this position with a red dot as a visual indicator to help remind you to make this transition to the outer row. So the last step is entering all your information into the Sample Changer software, or Icon NMR software. To do this, we have created a packet with step-by-step -step instructions on how to interface with the software, set up your sample, and any experiments you wish to perform. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to contact Bob, TC, or myself. In addition, we will be going over this portion in a bit more detail during the in-person training so we can address any questions or concerns that do arise.